Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my God. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Guess what we are doing today? As you can see by the title, I am going to be reading the Throne of Glass series. Today's video is Sarah J Mass themed. It is Throne of Glass, it is happening, okay? I am so excited about this and I literally can't wait. As you can see, I am in a new setting. I did move into our new house and I'm still setting up the bookshelf area. Nothing is organized right now, so whatever. But I have a very special package. Rachel from Raven Haired Reader, my bestie here on booktube. I was on sprints with her like, I don't know, probably a month ago by now, Sarah J Mass and Throne of Glass came up and literally it was like a bunch of my booktube friends on these sprints and they got me very intrigued into wanting to read Throne of Glass. I have read A Court of Thrones and Roses, I have read the first Crescent City, um, but I have never read Throne of Glass and honestly, <laughs> I want nothing more in my life, in my reading life at this moment other than to be a Sarah J Mask girly. Like it sounds so fun and so delightful and so lighthearted and like I would be stepping into a new era. I don't think I have given any of the books that I've read by her five stars, but I've enjoyed them. But I don't have the same kind of hype that a lot of people do on booktube. But I want to so bad. You have no idea how much I want to love Sarah J Mass. <laughs> So I'm going to be giving Throne of Glass a try. I have heard very good things. I've heard the first few books. I might have to stick it out a little bit in order to like get into the world and get into the more of the world building. My girl, Rachel from Raven Haired Reader, she had all of the paperbacks that she was going to be getting rid of them. And she was like, oh my gosh, why don't I just send them to you? And I was like, yes, I will buy these off of you. So here we are. We're doing a little unboxing <laughs> of the Throne of Glass series. <laughs> So I don't know, let me open this box. I'm so excited, you guys. I'm so excited. Oh my, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, she sent me a card. Stop, she's so sweet. What a sweetheart. Oh my, what a beautiful card. Um, obsessed, that's so gorgeous. Okay, <laughs> she says, I hope you love Throne of Glass. It's truly one of my favorite series of all time. Also, sorry, the box is so big. I didn't realize <laughs> how, the size of the books. Then she said, P.S. Read the Assassin's Blade first. So, Rachel, I will be doing that. I want to preface, like, I want to let you guys know, I know nothing about this series. All I know is the main character is named Selena, and that's it. I don't know any spoilers. I don't I don't know anything about the world. I don't even know what the plot is, but I'm gonna be reading it and we're gonna be figuring it out. So let's see what we've got here. Ooh, okay. Also, wow, these books are way bigger than I thought. Let's just do a little, a little haul, okay? So first from I see here is Empire of Storms. I have absolutely, okay, thank God that there is a way of reading them in the back here. Um, let me find, okay, here's the Assassin's Blade. Wow, that is way bigger than I expected. And the font is smaller than I anticipated. Okay, so we have the Assassin's Blade. We have, what is the next one? Throne of Glass. Here it is. Here, we have Throne of Glass. Cute, cute. Also, these books are in incredible condition. Way to go, Rachel. These are great. You treat your books so much kinder than I treat my books. And I don't mean to treat my books in that way, you know? It just happens. I'm just a mess. We have Tower of Dawn. I don't know which one this one. Girl, I don't know what order these go in. Oh, Tower of Dawn is the almost the second to last one. Okay, beauty, beauty. Queen of Shadows. This looks intense. Okay, my best guess about this series, about what it's about, I think it's about a girl who's an assassin. Because... First book's called Assassin's Blade, so. Uh, Kingdom of Ash, I do know this is the last one in the series. Cute. Do I like the covers? Um, I, I don't not like them, but they're definitely not like the prettiest covers I've ever seen in my life. We have two more here. Oh, I already showed you Empire of Storms, didn't I? Yes, I actually like that cover. I think that one's pretty cool. Crown of Midnight. She's got long hair in this one. <laughs> And then last but not least, we have Air of Fire, another long hair. I do really, really like the um, 
spines of these. I think that they look really nice on people's bookshelves and I can't wait to have them on my bookshelf. Oh, shout out again to my girl, Rachel. You are a queen for sending me these. I had put holds on my library for the first few books and it was like multiple weeks out. So clearly people want to be reading these books. I was thinking about just reading the back of one of them and trying to figure out what these are about, but I think I'm just gonna go in completely blind and try and just you just read it read it for myself so if you are interested in following along of this series of me reading throne of glass series make sure to hit that subscribe button and please give me a thumbs up if you like sarah j mass because she is the booktube queen like people on booktube absolutely love her give me a thumbs up for trying to enter into my sarah j mass era we love it we stand i think the thing that i was most scared about going into this series is that i've missed the hype like i should have read these when i I was in high school and I would have loved them when I was in high school or like college or something like that but I am way past my school age eras now so I'm really really hoping that I still do love them but I've heard people have read it in their 20s or like later 20s and 30s and really enjoyed it so I'm hoping that's going to be the case for me I literally can't wait I'm so excited I don't even know what Assassin's Blade is about I thought that it was kind of like a series of novellas oh it is it literally says the throne of glass novellas so I will be starting with this one first and let's just get into reading it. I have been waiting so long to finally read these. I'm so excited. morning everyone okay so i just finished um the first sorry i'm like obviously not at home <laughs> um i just finished the first story of like the pirate story with selena the assassin and the pirate lord and i am really really liking it and just started the second story um i feel like this is very much like classic fantasy without it being over complicated you know like there's pirates and there's assassins and there's like just looking at the titles of the rest of them there's just like classic fantasy elements that i'm really excited for the underworld and the empire like all good things all good things like it's a very simplistic fantasy like from coming from just reading the third book in the stormlight archives to this it's like kind of a breath of fresh air like i'm still able to get those fantasy components but then also like just have it be an easier read you know like i said i just read the the fourth book in the stormlight archives there is one character in that book that it, she really really reminds me of like a very younger version of her and they, they have very similar personalities like they're just like very secretive and just like really intense vibes and like very assassin vibes i guess <laughs> i don't know how to describe it but basically just they're both very strong women very like secretive like can get their shit done without people noticing and stuff like that they're just like badass women just in general they're total badasses i'm excited to keep reading i have a feeling that i mean obviously she's going to develop as a character and she's going to age throughout the books as we get to know her more i kind of do agree with starting with this first i've heard the reason that you want to start with the assassin's blade is so you can kind of get to know her as a character before you jump right in and like you get the backstory before you jump right into the series and i do agree with it so far i feel like it's been easy to start off with. It's been a good introduction to the character um, or to Selena as a character and to the world in general. I don't feel like I'm just being jumped in in the middle of everything. Like that story was very much wrapped up in a bow. Like there was no thing, like nothing like left unanswered. Really, really looking forward to continuing and hoping it's not gonna let me down. You know, I have high hopes at this point. So we're gonna keep going. One other thing I forgot to mention. Okay, so I'm basically like right around page 100 and she's already let out a breath that she didn't know she was holding so <laughs> bit of a red flag but it wasn't in terms of a romance so i will i will let it pass okay <laughs>
okay um <laughs> so i keep recording all of these clips on my phone and i know i should just get out my camera but like i'm too lazy okay i want to give you a little update on her uh so i am into the third novella in here which is the assassin in the desert and okay i i think i gave you the update yesterday about how i'm really enjoying this it is like an easy or high fantasy and also the novellas are very succinct wrapped up kind of in a bow but all of the novellas connect like you're not jumping from one storyline to the another and to another and to another it's like the story just continues throughout all the novellas just one book leads into the next so it is I mean, I don't even think you honestly had to do novellas for this. It could have just been a book, but I'm enjoying it. And the novellas are keeping it, keeping me moving, keeping a good pace. So I'm really enjoying this. I did sprints last night for Questathon with Christine and Sahar, and it was awesome. We had such a good time. It was just such like a little impromptu sprinting session, and I loved it. And <laughs> that's my vibe. Yes, I'm going to be continuing reading this today. I have to go on an 11 mile run, and I'm really, really putting it off. Like, really and if you didn't know i'm training for a marathon why am i doing this i think i'm hurt i don't even want to talk about it but i downloaded the audiobook so i could listen to it maybe on the run if i'm at like a a solid just cruising pace we'll give it a try i don't know but yes yeah, so far really enjoying it i'm really interested to getting into the more of the series and like learning about what's gonna happen also there's like a potential little love interest going on already i just want to quick explain the plot basically this is my understanding so far we have a 16 year old girl named selena who is an assassin she has been training to be an assassin she was since she was eight years old throughout this story you are realizing okay you think of an assassin you're like she's a badass she just goes and takes names but she actually has a little bit of a soft side to her and you're kind of seeing it through her actions throughout these stories so it's kind of leaving an interest like this girl is like just coming at life with like i have to kill people but then like she has a soft spot there's clearly a backstory she has humanity in her um and also there's like a lot of questions about like how did she get here like why is she in this position and why is she an assassin that's my main question right now the story right now is leading to a lot of potential or so many ways the story can go i'm really interested and i'm really interested to see what the series is going to be about specifically like is there going to be like like each book presents like a different quest or is there going to be an overarching storyline i don't know but i like it i'm actually really happy that i'm liking it because I didn't think that I was going to. Is this the best start of a series that I've read of all time? Absolutely not, but I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time and I'm interested to keep reading it. Like I keep, every time I put it down, I'm like, oh, I want to read it. So I like it. <laughs> Who am I turning into? I'm so happy. I want to be part of the Sarah J Mass fandom so bad. Like I said, you have no idea. You have no idea. Yeah, I'm going to go on this run. God help me. Okay, hi friends. Time for a check-in. It's been like two or three days since I've checked in, but that's because I haven't read like a ton more. I am now in the last novella, The Assassin in the Empire. So I guess I have read two since I checked in last. Thoughts. Okay, number one, I'm enjoying it. I'm liking the book. I think this is a really, really good starter fantasy for people. Like I can totally see why people like have a lot of nostalgia associated with this. I feel like this could be like, just like a little gateway into entering more epic and high fantasy reading. I feel like the plot is like fairly simple. It's not overly complicated. You can follow it really easily, which I think is like, I really enjoy that. I feel like I said, I think it's a really great starter novel. A few things just about the story in general. So number one, Okay, this is like a bind up of different novellas for like this series, right? I don't think it had to be novellas. Like honestly, it just reads as a book. Each story follows into the next. There's not like major, major time jumps between each story. Like there are time jumps, but it's not like to the point where you're missing information in between. A few things, I know everyone's like, read Assassin's Blade first. And I get that and I like how I'm getting the context of Selena as a character. What I feel like I don't have context on right now is the world. Like I don't feel like I understand the world as a whole. I don't understand like the, the, the system that people are 
subject to in this world. Like women are really, really oppressed. From what I can gather, women are either sold off to brothels or they are like basically men's property in one way or another. Like they are bought and sold. At least that's what it seems. And like they're very, very taken advantage of by men. And I don't feel like I have good context as to how Selena got in this place. Like how did she get to be Arobin's assassin. I don't think, I don't know if I missed it. Like they did not explain that thus far. And I don't know if I'm gonna get that in the actual series itself. Otherwise, I feel like it's giving good backstory to her relationship with Sam. I don't know how this guy is going to play out in the rest of the series too. Like in knowing nothing about the series, I think this is an okay starting point. It'll be interesting to see how, when I read Throne of Glass, how these two compare. I'm wondering if I'm gonna be a lot more well-informed when I read Throne of Glass than if I had just gone into it blind and I feel like maybe I would be more lost in that case but I just I really need to understand the world right now because that is a huge question mark also okay if you haven't read this basically Selena is like this assassin she like kills people and she's like 16 years old and killing people um and she works for this guy named Arabin who's he's not in, like the army but he's just like upper ranks in society and like I, he like owns like an assassin's guild first of all Arabin had red flags from the get-go from the get-go and Selena keeps coming back to him and I'm like girl why are you doing this like I know you're young but like red flag man red flag I feel like from what just happened in like in the assassin and the underworld something happened between her and Arobin specifically and I'm like girl I saw that coming like a million miles away I'm wondering if I'm gonna get frustrated with her choices as she develops as a character farther along into the series um but I'm probably gonna finish this tonight I'm gonna go on a bike ride right now and I'm gonna listen to it so I think I only have maybe like an hour and a half left of the audiobook I should definitely be able to finish this tonight and then we're doing a 24-hour readathon this weekend well I'm doing a 24-hour readathon this weekend and I'm planning on reading Throne of Glass so can't wait for that it's going to be included in this vlog so you're going to get to see it I don't know it's going fine I think I'm going to give it like a three point uh, like either a three star or three and a half star like I don't know I I definitely didn't expect to give it a five star but like I'm not okay I'm not disappointed in it I, I'll say that I feel like this book very well met my expectations, if not exceeded it a little bit. I'm gonna go on a run, I'll be back, and then I'm gonna get to reading tonight. Bye! Okay, sorry, I just got out of the shower and I'm using my phone again. Whatever, it's fine. Um, I want to give a little update. I literally have like 50 pages left. This Aerobin guy, bad news bears. He is despicable to me. I feel like he is blurring the lines between father figure to Selena, but like, okay, n not actual father figure, like really toxic, bad person father figure to Selena. And then also he's just displaying really emotionally abusive behavior towards her. And I'm not here for it. I am not okay with it. I'm, I think he has some kind of like romantic feeling towards her. And I, uh, uh, my guy, she is 16 years old. I don't know how old you are, but I think you're in your like late twenties or thirties. And that's not okay. That is not okay. I don't know why Sarah J Mass chose him to show that side of him. You know what I mean? Like it just, I don't feel like it's adding anything to the plot and it's like really freaking creepy. Um, so I just wanted to say that, <laughs> but I'm almost done and I'm excited. So yeah, I'm gonna keep reading. Um, I think something is about to happen that is bad, bad, bad. Not good. Not good. I have a feeling. Shit.
I didn't think that was gonna happen. I didn't see that coming. Hi, sorry, I'm in bed and I'm not getting up. Okay, um, I just finished it. I'm feeling a 3.5. Um, I think the series has a lot of potential. I really like Selena as a character. I think that there's a lot more to go, um, but I do think that there were some downfalls. Like, number one, I feel like I know nothing about the world still. I still don't know about the magic system and um, Selena's... Like, I understand her backstory as a teenager, but I don't understand how she got to this this position. Like, how did she get to being an assassin you know what i mean i don't know like her actual backstory like where did you know like her childhood and all that kind of stuff that i feel like would actually probably explain a lot more other things arabin is a piece of shit literally screw that guy i'm not gonna spoil things but if you know you know he sucks and to be honest with you i didn't really see like i filmed that portion that I was like you know more of a, a little shocker scene and then even things that happened after that and where the book is leaving off for the series that I'm guessing is going to start from this point where we left off in this book at least that's what I'm hoping it's going to start at otherwise I would be very confused as to where we would go from there um I'm really intrigued about the series now I'm like okay what's gonna happen like wh what's what's she gonna do what's she gonna do and I I really hope it will pick up where this book left off because I'm really intrigued I thought the writing was okay like I said I think this is a very great beginner fantasy book yeah I'm feeling a 3.5 because I thought it was fine I enjoyed it quite a bit um but I didn't get like I went away feeling like, oh, that was a good book. That was fine. I enjoyed it. But, like, nothing really blew me away. I wasn't, like, overly um, invested by any means. They were, you know, they were nice stories, but nothing blew me away. Yeah, other than that, just really excited to see where, where it's going to go. I think the story has a lot of potential. Like, I can see maybe giving five stars to books in, in the future as Sarah J. Mass develops as a writer, because I think she wrote this when she was like 18 or something like that. So lots of potential here, really invested into the characters already, really invested into the world. And to be honest with you, with you I think I like this world more than I like A Court of Thorns and Roses. And I also think I'm going to like the action piece of this more than A Court of Thorns and Roses too. Like, a Court of Thorns and Roses, very heavily fantasy romance. And this is more like epic fantasy heavy. Like it's just like more classic fantasy elements rather than focusing more on romance. Like there was romance subplot, but that wasn't the main focus. And I think I appreciate that. I appreciated that the romance was like a little bit on the back burner. I'm fine if it comes out a little bit more further down the line, but I enjoyed reading a fantasy novel by her a lot okay i'm gonna go to bed and yeah sorry this is like a shaky angle and a weird angle but whatever it's fine okay bye hi friends okay update update okay last night i think i updated you a little bit with my immediate thoughts on assassin's blade enjoyed it i think i honestly stand by everything i said last night i don't think there's anything new to add Arabin sucks i'm very interested to see where the series is gonna go Really, really, really looking forward to starting a Throne of Glass tonight. Um, speaking of Throne of Glass, okay, yeah, I'm, I guess I don't have any other updates on this, but 
finished it 3.5 sticking with that rating also rachel texted me and she was like that's my second to least favorite one out of the whole thing so i am in for some more if that was her second to least favorite there it can only go up from here you know i just want to quick explain where this reading vlog is going next so i'm starting a 24-hour readathon I was hoping to have this vlog finished before then, but you know what? Life got in the way, it didn't work out. I'm gonna be incorporating the 24 hour readathon into this video. So you're gonna get a bonus 24 hour reading vlog. Questathon, like all of the hosts, the co-hosts were, well, not all of us, most of us, we are doing a unofficial 24 hour readathon. My goal, honestly, I just wanna finish this. <laughs> I'm not really setting myself too um, ambitious. I just wanna finish Throne of Glass. So then we can have a completed reading vlog and I can move on with the rest of my Questathon books. But yeah, we're starting reading sprints in an hour. I'm super interested to see what's gonna happen and I really hope it picks up where Assassin's Blade left off because if it doesn't, I think I'd be honestly sad because I feel like I'm really interested to see what where that picks off after Assassin's Blade, you know? It's paralleling a little bit of Game of Thrones to me and I really like that because I love Game of Thrones. I haven't read the whole series, I haven't read any of the series actually, but I like, I love Game of Thrones, the show. I'm hoping that it actually gives those vibes. That would be great. All right, we're gonna get to reading sprints and I'm so excited, bye. quick update. Um, I am on page 16. Number one, it started off where we left off with Assassin's Blades. So we'll not start off exactly at the same time, but it's in the same setting, which really excited about. And number two, there's a competition. <laughs> I'm so, so excited. I'm on chapter three and I am sucked in. Like, I want to know what's happening. I I want the tea. I want to know exact. I want to know everything. I'm so excited. I really, really, really hope this is going to um, live up to the hype and all of the expectations that I have for it. So excited. So, 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 so excited. Good things are happening. I'm in a great reading place. Love this for me. I need to record an update. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh my god. I'm on page 38. Okay, this book is starting off spicy. We are into it. Okay. Oh my god. The love triangle that's already forming. I am obsessed with it. Okay, can I just say one thing? One, one thing. I read the Assassin's Blade first, right? And people will die on this hill. I agree. I agree that we should do that first because this is why. The Assassin's Blade builds up the fantasy plot, right? Like you're, you're understanding how Selena got to where she's at when Throne of Glass starts. You are figuring out just basics of the world. Like I was saying last night, like you don't know the whole ins and outs of the world and like how the magic system works and all that kind of stuff. But like you're getting a really, really good backstory and a really good plot set up for the rest of the series. And now we're jumping right back where we started. So we already have a whole backstory story. We already know what's going on. And then there's gonna be a little love triangle on top of it and I'm already invested in it. Yes, it is part of the plot, but there's also such a bigger plot going on beside it that like the romance is supplementing that bigger plot. For me personally, it's a big personal preference that I'm not like a big romance as the forefront kind of person, but I really, really like the balance we have going here. Like there's so much great fantasy elements going on, like really great, simplistic, introductory fantasy elements happening that are very accessible. Many people can read and understand and it's not overly complicated, but then you also got the little spice of the romance and girl, I'm here for it. I'm loving it. I... 
I'm telling you right now, there is gonna be a love triangle between the prince, Kale, and Selena. It's, it, that's what's gonna happen. There is gonna be a great love triangle and I am here for it and I cannot wait for it. I'm obsessed, I can't wait to keep reading. I'm here for it and I'm dead. I am absolutely floored dead. This is great, here for it. So glad I'm reading this. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh my God, I just, I can't with this romance, I can't. This is what I wanted. I wanted this feeling of I cannot freaking stop reading this book and reading Sarah J Mass and I finally got this feeling. <laughs> Who is in her hot girl Sarah J Mass era now? Me, 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 me. I love this for me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, manifestation works, baby. Um, She did it, I manifested and here we are. <laughs> I'm obsessed. I cannot, I can't, I can't wait to keep reading. I love this. Okay. Mm, bye. <laughs>almost 80 pages in, can I just say, can I just say, five star feels, five star feels. I'm loving it, absolutely loving this. Let me just tell you what I'm loving about this. Okay, number one, we have plot. We have great plot. This is like almost like Hunger Games type of plot where it's like a competition style and you're gonna see her go through this whole competition, which is amazing and super intriguing and I love it. Number two, like, okay, I feel like I've gotten all the character development from Assassin's Blade and like bringing it into Throne of Glass is just like, I'm so happy that I have all of this history with this character already. So I'm like already really invested in her, right? Number three, we have romance. This romance subplot going on here, I... <laughs> I'm so here for it. I'm so here for it. Oh my God, I literally, I cannot wait for whatever romance is gonna play out to play out. The characters are great. I just, I don't even know who I'm rooting for right now. I don't know who I'm rooting for. I'm just rooting for Selena because I really, really like her as a character. Top tier. I, <laughs> I think it's worth the hype. This is totally worth the hype. I didn't think it was gonna be this good. I thought I was gonna be like, oh, it's okay. Because I like, I feel like people always really like, like a court of thorns and roses. They all, like everyone talks about that all the time. They like talk about a court of mist and fury. And I read that and I was like, yeah, it was okay, but like, I didn't really love Feyre as a character, and Feyre is like the main character throughout the whole thing. Yeah, she just like, I, I didn't really connect to her at all, but I really, really love Selena, and I'm really invested in her story. It's going great. I'm so excited about this. Honestly, might scrap my entire <laughs> Questathon TBR just so I can read the Throne of Glass series. <laughs> Who is she? I did not think this was gonna happen. This is amazing. Okay, quick update before I go to bed. We just finished sprints and I am like, I am fading so fast. I was fading fast in like the second to last sprint and then I was like downhill, just downhill drop for the last one. I'm really loving Throne of Glass. I think I'm gonna have to read all of the chapters that I read in the last sprint again tomorrow because honestly don't know what I read, but I know I, would, I, know I liked it, whatever I did read. Oh, woof, I am weak guys. It's 12.40, girl, I gotta go to bed. Okay, love you, bye.
it's been a busy day not reading, which, um, but let me tell you a little bit about Throne of Glass and what I am feeling so far. Number one, five star feels. Okay, absolutely freaking loving this book. I think I said last night or on some other update, it gives the plot, it gives the romance, it gives the character development. It's literally everything I want, everything I want in a book. Yes, there's a love triangle going on right now and I am absolutely rooting for one of them. But I'm interested to see how she's gonna develop this other character because I have a feeling I'm gonna like him a little bit more at some point. There's a, gonna be a tension here. There's gonna be a push and pull and I can't wait to see what actually happens. Uh, number two, I'm thinking about scrapping my entire TBR for the month and just reading Throne of Glass series. Um, is that bad? I don't know. I think it'll be some great content. But also this is what my heart desires at the moment. So this is my channel. I get to decide what I want to do. So that's what I think I might do, okay? I love Selena. She is a freaking badass. I'm obsessed with her. I love her. Just She is just a strong woman. She doesn't need a man, but it would be nice to have a man. And that's the kind of woman that we love to see, okay? Someone who is self-sufficient, who can take care of herself, who is confident in who she is. But then if someone comes along and says, hey, we should be romantic, and then things happen. Yeah, I'm all for that. But you have to love yourself before you love someone else, you know? And I think that's my kind of girl. Feyre, who was the main character in A Court of Thrones and Roses, I didn't feel like that. I was, ugh, I was annoyed with her. Uh, now that I'm comparing Throne of Glass to Court of Thrones and Roses, this one, I, I am enjoying this one so much more than I'm like, I was enjoying Court of Thrones and Roses. Like, I understand the Sarah J Mass hype now. I get it. That's not to say that I'm not gonna read Court of Silver Flames because I, I will, I definitely will, but I'm just more in love with Th Throne of Glass at the moment. Yeah, it's rocking my world. I'm absolutely loving it. Cannot wait to keep continuing with the series. And I have so much more reading to go and it makes my heart jump with joy. You know when you start binge watching a TV show and you're like, oh my God, yes, I have eight seasons left of this TV show. That's how I'm feeling right now. Like I have so much content and I love it. And I'm so excited to just consume all of it. Loving it. Loving my time reading, loving this weekend and yeah, I will check in with you guys later. Bye! Hi everyone, want to give a little update on Throne of Glass. Let's talk about it. Number one, I feel like people who have not read The Assassin's Blade before they read Throne of Glass would not enjoy Throne of Glass as much. You need to read Assassin's Blade before you read Throne of Glass. Otherwise, you lose all of the context as to who Selena is as a character. You get so much backstory and it leads you into understanding who she is as a person and you understand why you're rooting for her through this whole thing. If you went into it without reading it, you just don't know who she is and you're not connected with her. It's almost like, why, why should I care about this character? But if you read Assassin's Blade, that's why. That's why you should care about this character. And then you get also a ton of backstory as well. Sarah J. Mass is already references, referencing things that are that happened in Assassin's Blade in Throne of Glass. So you already have context to it. So to be honest with you, I could give this book five stars. I'm absolutely loving it. The feeling I have right now is the feeling that I had when I first like was reading more YA adult, new adult books in high school. <sighs> what a special feeling. I haven't had this feeling probably since I was reading Twilight. And it just makes me so happy. Like, am I like learning things or like feeling like I'm developing my brain or connecting like extremely emotionally with these characters? Like a very deep emotional connection? No, but like I'm having a great freaking time, okay? I am really, really enjoying myself. I'm just loving it so much. It's just so like fun. Like I feel like this is the fun side of reading for me. I can get very emotional in my feels and just like really love a book that is like super introspective and like, you know, that kind of a book. But I can also love a book that's just a fun time. And is this like just a fun time? No, there's like a lot more going on. There's a big plot going on, right? But like, I'm just enjoying the fantasy. I'm enjoying the competition. I'm enjoying the romances. And like, that's what reading's all about, right? Like, I'm just having a great time and I love it, okay? I will say... For all of those who have read Throne of Glass, I feel like, okay, no, these are not spoilers. I just want to say I'm rooting Team Dorian. I am Team freaking Dorian. And obviously I don't know a lot about these characters yet or who they are as people, but I'm loving him. I am here for him, okay? <laughs> I might regret that later. I don't know, but for right now, 
Dorian's my babe. Yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. Also, I have been sprinting. Like, I, I'm doing reading sprints tonight, and I was doing them last night with some of the co-hosts of Questathon, like Rachel and Hannah and Cami and Christina. We are having the best time. I am just thriving right now with my booktube life, and I'm... <laughs> I am so happy about it. And I'm just so thankful to have met these people. And I'm just so thankful. And to be be able to connect with you guys over sprints, it's just the best. I'm having the best time. I'm I'm just so thankful for you guys and for my friends. And oh, I just love you. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to reading because I'm in a reading spin right now and I haven't read <laughs> any of it and I'm almost done with this print, so love that. Hi, I'm back again with an update. A few things I forgot to mention. Sorry, I'm a little tired. It is 10.30. Number one, this book is doing a lot, okay? We have a romance going. We have a fantasy going. We have a little bit of a like a mystery thriller situation going. Um, and then we also have, well, I said the romance, but it's like also like a historical romance. So there's like little like gossipy people in like the courts and stuff like that going. Is it doing too much? Maybe to some people, but not for me. I'm really, really loving it. And like there's elements of like a Regency romance in here. Let me just explain the premise of the book. In Throne of Glass, you are following Selena, who is an assassin. And she is chosen to participate in a competition to become like the king's assassin and basically she gets to stay in this castle where this competition is being held and she's not being courted by anyone but there's like a little bit maybe a little potential something something going on like there are a few parts of some chapters that have to do with like little gossip going on around the castle and stuff like that about like who likes who and you know all that classic stuff i freaking love it like it's just so fun to read I'm enjoying all of the hot goss. The fantasy elements are continuing to expand. And now we're getting even more world building. Like you're learning like the past history of the world, which is really cool. And I'm really, really enjoying that. Yeah, it is a ride and I'm absolutely loving it. <laughs> Hi friends. Okay, it's about 4.45 on Sunday. I haven't given you guys an update today because I had to run 12 miles this morning and I died, okay? I, I actually, my body could not handle it. I did it, but like, wow, my body is in pain right now. While I was on that run though, I did listen to more Throne of Glass. I'm probably about 75% of the way in. I want to talk more in depth about this book because I feel like a lot of people have read this. Selena is in a love triangle right now. There are two guys, Dorian and Kale, who she spends a lot of her time with. There's definitely something going on with one of them. It's not like they're things are going on between them. It's they're just it's a lot of flirty banter, a lot of back and forth and I'm literally obsessed with it. One thing that I'm really scared about though, as this series continues on, I think I'm scared of what's gonna happen is that she's gonna get coupled up really quickly and then I'm gonna have nothing to live for and I will be just bored. And to be honest, I'm not really 100% sure about who that's gonna be at this point, but I want the tension. I want to keep going back and forth. I love the flirty banter. I love the um, questioning of, you know, who's it going to be? Oh my gosh, look at all this flirting. Like, I'm literally obsessed with that. That's what's going on right now. And I'm scared of that ending. Also, Selena had a little bit of a Cinderella story moment. And I love that for her. I think I said this in a clip earlier. Do I feel like I have a new perspective on something with this book? No. Do I feel like I am learning something with this book? Absolutely not. Am I having a great freaking time? Yes. I am loving, loving this. This is what I wanted Akotar to be for me. Not that I didn't like Akotar, but I didn't get this feeling when I read Akotar. I read Akotar and I was like, okay, it's fine. And I know that's a very unpopular opinion. Like literally everyone loves that book. But like the feeling that I'm having with these books is the feeling 
that I had when I read like the selection series when I was like a preteen or the Twilight series or you know like those books that I you just literally could not stop reading that's the feeling that I'm having right now it's just like I can't put these books down and I'm obsessed with them honestly I could give this book a five stars just because I'm loving it I'm so here for it it has so many different plot lines going on at the moment and like I feel like the world's expanding and I'm just so interested interested to see how it will develop down the line too with the future books so god I'm just so happy I read it I'm so happy I'm reading it like it's just amazing it's amazing <laughs> Okay, one other thing I want to talk about. This is a total spoiler, but Dorian and Selena kissed and I, oh, dead. Absolutely dead. Absolutely dead. I'm freaking, I'm in love with Dorian right now. Okay, I'm absolutely in love with him. You could just tell he, he wants her. He wants her and Selena wants him, but they're both denying each other and like want them to like get together. But like, I don't know if I want them to work out necessarily. You know what I mean? Like... The sexual tension's there. I want that to resolve. And then we'll just be like, okay, maybe we'll move on to someone else. I don't really know. But I want to keep continuing these two storylines. So also, I do really like the part about the, um, like Selena found this like tomb of this like old queen or princess or something like that. And I actually really like that plot line that's going on. I think it's really, really interesting. And I think that there's going to be so much more we learn about this world through this plot line. It's going to be great. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm gonna go see my friend. We'll update you later. Hopefully I will finish it by the end of the day, but I'm not 100% sure that I will. We'll see. All right, bye. Hi. I wanna give a little update on Throne of Glass. Um, Number one, I've decided, I mean, I knew I was doing spoilers in the last clip, but like we're officially doing spoilers, okay? All of these reading vlogs are just gonna be spoilers. The books have been out for so long now, so it's just like, I'm gonna do spoilers, okay? I want you to get my real-time thoughts. Number one, I'm at the point where it's Selena's last competition right now. So she's like, they're doing the dueling. Okay, I'm enjoying the competition piece. I'm enjoying the, um, you know, trying to figure out the history with like the old Faye or whatever. I think that's really interesting. Um, but let's talk about the romance because I feel like that is what we're all here for. Okay, Selena's actually questioning now whether or not she wants to become the assassin. And she's like, I don't know if I actually wanna kill these people. And then she's like, but I wanna stay here. I wanna like stay in the castle. And we all know why. It's because of Dorian. She's like obsessed with him and I'm obsessed with him. I am very interested to see how the relationship with Dorian is going to play out compared to the relationship with Kale because obviously there is some tension there for her, between her and Kale. Like Kale likes her for sure. And I really like Kale right now. Right now as a character. I think he's really sweet. I think he's really kind and just wants to be her friend. And I think that's really special. And I'm just hoping we don't get like an automatic, like her and Dorian are paired up and there's never any pining between Kale or anything like that. Like it's a little bit of a Jacob Edward situation and I'm really, really, really living for it. I love this kind of like, you know, love triangle we have going on here, but I'm very interested to see how it's going to play out with Kale. I know some of my friends on booktube like have very polarizing opinions on kale so i'm very interested to see what i'm gonna think like i said before i think i'm gonna scrap my entire tbr and just read throne of glass yeah i just wanted to give that update i literally have like 60 pages left so i'm gonna be finishing it this afternoon if not while i'm at work but um i will update you guys when i'm done okay loving it loving it bye <laughs>
I don't want this to be an easy road for Dorian and Selena. Well, it's not. She broke up with him. It's over, baby. Well, it's not over, but it's like, we can't be together, which I kind of also love because now they could potentially be secret lovers in the next one, which I would die for. But then also, Kale, I... <laughs> I want her to just go back and forth. Is that weird? Like, I don't want this to be an easy road of love for her. I mean, like, I, I do I want her to end up happy one day? Yeah, but, like, my intrigue, I want the pining. I want the difficulty being together. I don't want this to be an easy road. Also, I kind of like Kale. Like, am I rooting for them? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. I'm just flip-flopping back and forth. There's no right answer for me right now as to who I want her to be with. Overall thoughts, though, I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I am loving it. I don't know exactly what I'm going to give it. Initially, I was thinking five stars, but then I kind of got, like, a little slowed down at the end. I don't know. I'm teetering between a four and a five. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'll do caw piles and see what I end up giving it. But I love Selena as a main character. I really, really think she's great. I love how she's just independent woman who don't need no man if she doesn't want a man. But if she wants a man, then she can have a man. Like, that's what I want for my main character. I don't want my main character to be like, I have to be with a man. Like, that annoys me so much. Or like, man will solve all my problems no she can solve her own problems bitch like she she can do it i also really like the world i'm really intrigued to find out more about like is selena Fay? i'm guessing so because elena alluded to it at the end she was like we're blood sisters and selena was like what i'm hoping she's Fay. like that would be kind of cool i'd be into that it seemed like there's like so much of the world that we haven't explored yet and there's so much more like fantastical and magical elements of the world that we don't know about yet which i'm really really interested to getting into i liked like for just throne of glass in general i liked how it started off with a bang like we had this competition we had like really like major high stakes good involvement like it was really quick to get through from that point of view did i not was there anything i didn't like let me think to be honest no i liked everything about it I liked everything. This is exactly what I wanted for my summer reading. Like, I feel like I'm having like summer reading school vibes, like where I am like a middle schooler teenager who's like doing a freaking summer reading program and I'm obsessed. This is the vibe I want for this summer. It is like, this is hot girl reading vibes for me. And I love it, even though I look whatever this is right now. I think I'm just going to leave you here. Maybe I'll give you some final thoughts in a sec, but loved it loved it hi i'm back okay back to give my final thoughts on throne of glass throne of amazingness this is what i have decided i have been toying with my rating all day because i had such a great time with this book such an amazing time unparalleled experience but i feel like this series has so much more potential that I don't, I don't want to give it a five star because I have a feeling that there's going to be more books in the series that are going to completely top this one and blow it out of the park. So I've been toying with 4.5 or a 4. I think I'm going to go with a 4.5 for now. And I want to tell you why. I, okay, five star is like amazing, like blow it out of the park book, which this did, but I feel like I slowed down a little bit at the ending. And then also, I just I just think that there's more potential to be had from the series. You know, like, I think we're at a really great starting point. I think we're at a way better starting point than I was with, with Assassin's Blade. But I think that so much is more is going to happen. And I'm so, so excited about it. Also, I just want to say a few other things. Number one, I might have talked about this in my last clip, but my last clip was like so all over the place, which I'm sure this one is too. But I want to, okay. If you haven't read Akotar yet, just, just skip forward a little bit, okay? Because I want to talk about something real quick. Again, spoilers. This, I, this is all spoilers from here on out. So the one thing that I loved about this book is that the love interest, it's not set in stone. There is so much more to go. First of all, she like, her and Dorian are not together right now. And like, I feel like potential things can happen with Kale now. But then you still have Dorian who's like, still in love with her, which I love. And now she's gonna go be back and forth. And what I love about this compared to Akotar, I just, this is what I want out of my, I want the action. I want 
the romance. I want the plot. Like, I want all of it. And I feel like with Akotar, I was upset with the, like, the world building. And I, okay, you know what? I'm gonna get some slack for this. I know people, like, th that's their favorite series, but that is my only other experience with Sarah J Mass. Well, and I have read Crescent City, which I think that's in a different league of its own. I think I really enjoyed the romance aspect of Akotar, but like I legitimately hated the world and the world building. All I remember is in one of the books, there was this giant worm and there was like this trial thing that was happening and I hated it. And I, I did not care for that weird, like evil character who was like, killing I don't I don't even know what happened but there was like this underground world and like I literally hated all of that I thought I did not enjoy it I, it was not an enjoyable world for me and I understand that it's not supposed to be but like I just felt like all of the logic of that did not match up with the story like it just they were two separate things and I felt like the fantasy plot of that world was so underdeveloped to me and it was like all about the romance but like she was also trying to throw in this fantasy plot and I just didn't think that it made sense for me. I like, I really enjoyed the romance, but like I didn't care for the fantasy plot going on. But with this, I care about the romance and I care about the plot and I care about the world and I care about all of it. Like the whole thing is developed for me. And I know this is her first series that she put out. And I'm, I love this so much more than I loved Akotar as a series. And I'm so much more excited to see where this is gonna go. So yes, but I am gonna give it a 4.5 just because I have a feeling the series is gonna have more potential. And like the ending for me of this book got a little slow for me and I don't know why. I think it was just a little bit predictable. Not to say that I didn't enjoy it, but it was predictable. Like I wasn't like, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. So I think that's why I think I was excited expecting like a little bit more of an ending there, but I enjoyed it a ton. I had a great freaking time. I'm just obsessed with it and I cannot wait to start Crown of Midnight. Actually, I've already started it, so. My content for the next foreseeable future is just gonna be thrown off glass. So I hope you're prepared for it. If you don't enjoy Sarah J Mass or you don't, you need a break from her, I will be back with regular scheduled content once I'm done with this series, okay? But until then, I am going to immerse myself in this because I picked up Crown of Midnight and I was already just like, I can't, I include, I can't stop reading, I can't stop reading. So I'm gonna be putting out more reading vlogs for this. I hope you enjoy it. And I've decided the reading vlogs from here on out are going to be spoilery reading vlogs because this book has, this series has been out long enough and I am just, I wanna talk about all the spoilers with you, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I cannot believe I finally read this series. I, to be honest with you, like last year after I read Akotar, I was like, there is no way anyone is gonna be able to get me to read these because I was like not over the moon with Akotar. And I was like, this is her earlier series. I'm not gonna like it. I'm not gonna enjoy it. It's not gonna be good. But wow, I've completely been blown away, completely surprised. I'm loving it. I'm so excited to continue with the series. If you love Sarah J Mass, if you are an SJM girly, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to watch the rest of me reading this entire series because that's gonna happen. And I don't want you to miss it, okay? I love you, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have made it to the end, give me, is there is there like a, is there like a sword emoji or like something that represents Throne of Glass? Whatever emoji inspires you for Throne of Glass, put that in the comments, I would love that. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I can't wait for my Crown of Midnight vlogs. I'm gonna go read them right now, okay? Bye!